Hey everybody, Neo Flynn here, and it is Thursday, and you guys know what time that is. It's time for Sports Shorts, and this is episode two. Uh, I got some good feedback on the first one, so it's something that I'm going to continue to do at least for, the, for a little while. We'll see how it goes. Um, and I've kind of come up with a little format. Um, I figure I'll talk about, you know, one or two stories in sports, um, and then go ahead and get with the picks. Um, got an extra set of picks this week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick the baseball playoffs as a few things could still change, but the teams are pretty much set. Um, it's just a matter of whether Tampa Bay or New York wins their division and who wins between San Diego and San Francisco. But I'm going to go with my gut on who's going to make it, but I'll get to that uh, when we get to the picks. Um, first story I want to talk about is... Um, and this kind of goes back a ways, um, and it's something that just cropped up again, and that is players uh, interacting with fans in the stands. Um, you know, it's something that's that's gone on for a long time. Everybody remembers the incident in Detroit um, where things got really out of hand, um, and we've had a couple instances uh, in the NFL uh, within the last couple of weeks. Uh, Brandon Jacobs a couple of weeks ago thrown his helmet. He says it was an accident, who knows, and then the uh, guy for Green Bay, I can't think of his name right now, but threw his mouthpiece uh, into the stands in Chicago on Monday night. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Um, but it's just one of those things. If, he, if you're a player, no matter what somebody says to you in the stands, you've got to be the bigger person. You, you're the professional, you're getting paid. In some case, you know, in the case of professionals, millions of dollars to play a game. You know, who cares what some fan in the stands says to you? And I guess I have a little bit of a biased opinion on this because um, I tend to be someone who heckles at sporting events. <laughs> um, especially being in Atlanta, being a Mets fan when I go to the Braves game. But obviously, I'm in enemy territory. Um, so, you know, I gotta heckle the Braves when I can. Um, and... I go uh, to the minor league hockey games here. Um, we have a team that plays, that's the, the Thrasher's Farm team, that's their double-A team. Um, and my wife and I go fairly frequently. Um, and the seats that we get, I always try and get the same seats. And it's right by the tunnel where the visiting players come out. So I'm literally right there. You know, here's me, here's the players. And... You know, I don't say anything derogatory, I don't say, you know, I don't curse at them, I don't... I'm pretty... a pretty laid-back heckler. Yes, I'll heckle you if your play is terrible, I'll tell you that. But I'm not, you know, I don't talk about your wife or your girlfriend or your mother or anything like that. Um, and I've actually had an incident, um, this was two or three years ago, maybe. Um, and we were playing our main rival, and... They have a goalie there that we just get on. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's not actually not there anymore, but at the time, you know, he was our most hated opposing goalie. Um, everybody got on him. You know, you've all heard, if you've been to hockey or watch hockey, you've all heard the, the you suck goalie chant. And, you know, we always do that at, the, at those games. And he would, you know, it was, it was a good game. And I can't remember even what I said, but I said something at the end of the second period. Um... That apparently made, you know, him angry. And instead of, you know, saying anything to me, one of the teammates, you know, took a cup of their Powerade or whatever that they were drinking and kind of threw it up at me. Nothing happened. Um, got a little on the ground. I got a little on my wife's purse that we wiped off with a towel. But, you know, so... And what's funny about that is they wound up losing the game, and I'd like to think I had something to do with it. <laughs> but, uh... So I've, I've even had a little incident, you know, with contact with players, but it's just one of those things. Like I said, the players, you're there, you're getting paid to play a game, you've got to be the bigger person no matter what somebody, some schmuck fan in the, you know, stand says to you, you've got to be the bigger person. So just my little two cents on that. Uh, the other thing I want to get to, and going uh, back to last week's episode, somebody asked me if I like hockey. Yes, I do like hockey, and I was going to maybe do the hockey picks for the season uh, this week, but I decided to hold off for a little uh, for a week on that and go ahead and do the baseball picks um, this week. But I will do you know my predictions for the season uh, next week. But one thing I wanted to get to is um, 
Jeremy Roenick, um, decided on his XM radio show that he needed to bash the Thrashers. Excuse me while I get a little liquid refreshment. Um, <clears throat> and I find this kind of funny. Now, if you guys don't know, Jeremy Roenick has never one to, uh, hold back his thoughts on anything. And you may be wondering, well, what does he care about the Thrashers? Well, this goes way back to 2006, um where the GM of Atlanta at the time, Don Waddell, did not pick um, Jeremy Roenick to be part of the 2000 Olympic team. And apparently Roenick still thinks that Don Waddell is the GM of the Thrashers, because one of his quotes kind of bashes Waddell, who's actually not the GM anymore. <laughs> so you might want to get his story straight before he bashes. But anyway, let me get to the quote. Uh, this is exactly what he said. And he's talking about uh, the Thrashers deciding to play Dustin Bufflin, who they picked up in the offseason from the Blackhawks, uh, at defense. And here's what he says. That might be the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Dustin Bufflin is a defenseman. I would love to play against Dustin Bufflin as a defenseman. I would turn him inside out, left and right, and center every single time. This kid, he made his living in front of the net scoring goals during the playoffs for the Blackhawks. Why on earth would you put him back as a defenseman? The kid is strong, he's powerful, he's a great skater. Put him in front of the net as a forward. That's where you want him to do all his damage. Playing him as a defenseman, maybe that's why the Thrashers are 0-3 in the preseason. Maybe that's why nobody comes to watch their games. It's crazy. What are they thinking? They already have a GM who he thinks is Rick, who he thinks is Don Waddell, but it's not as Rick Dudley. That doesn't know the game whatsoever, but hey, that's just my opinion. Like me or hate me, if you don't agree, I'm not a big fan of Atlanta for a lot of reasons, but the fact that they're going to play Dustin Bufflin as a defenseman, my goodness gracious. So, yeah, Jeremy Roenick, first of all, um, if you don't know Dustin Bufflin's history, uh, he actually, in the minor leagues, played as a defenseman. <clears throat> and actually, for the Blackhawks last year, played partly as a defenseman. So, the Thrashers moving in defense is not that big a deal. He, um, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, he scored, um, 15 goals as a forward. So, you know, he's not out there scoring 30 goals or whatever. So he can, you know, he can still score from the blue line. And if they use him on the power play and things like that, you know. But it's, I just find it kind of funny that Jeremy Roenick has to go out of his way to bash Atlanta. Um, first of all, yeah, the, the Thrashers don't draw huge. But it's not really a hockey town. It's it's a football town. Um, and, and to a lesser extent, a baseball town. So, obviously, the Thrashers are not... excuse me, the go-to, you know, sporting event. But they they draw fairly decent, and it's, yes, they're 0-3, actually 0-4, they lost last night. Um, <clears throat> oh, in the preseason, but it's the freaking preseason, who cares? They're working on things. And actually, they haven't given up that many goals, they just haven't scored many goals. Um, so, yeah, just Jeremy Roenick needs to learn what he's talking about. First of all, he doesn't know who our GM is, and second of all, who cares what the Thrashers do? Why do you care? Anyway, so just my two cents on Jeremy Roenick and his running his mouth. Uh, so let's get to the picks. First of all, let's review for last week. Uh, I did decent. Um, the ones I missed, I missed pretty badly. Uh, but I uh, hit more than I missed, so that's pretty good. Um, and in fact, all three of my misses were horrible misses, but... <laughs> Uh, starting off, we'll review NCAA. I had Boston College uh, over Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech was a four-point favorite. Virginia Tech killed them. Um, Mississippi State, Georgia, that was a pick -em, and I picked Mississippi State, who won. Uh, Utah State at San Diego State. San Diego State getting eight and a half. They destroyed Utah State. I don't know what I was thinking on that one. Uh, Utah State fooled me with their Oklahoma game, but... And last but not least was Alabama and Arkansas. Alabama was getting seven. Uh, Alabama did win the game, but it was by, what was it, three or four points. Uh, it was four points, I think. So Arkansas covered the spread, so get that. Give me that one. And in the NFL, we had Cincy three and a half over Carolina, which they won. Uh, Atlanta over New Orleans, who was getting three and a half. Atlanta won outright. Uh, San Francisco getting seven and a half at Kansas City. That one was terrible. Uh, Kansas City just killed them. And then last but not least, Oakland at Arizona. Arizona getting four and a half. Oakland lost by one. They actually should have won the game. They had a field goal at the end that he missed uh, that would have won it. But 
they still covered. So over and all, a decent week went five and three, um, which you know I'll take that. I'm above five hundred. So <laughs> let's hopefully we can have a better week this week. So we'll start off uh, in the NCAA. Just looked these up last night. Uh, we got Stanford at Oregon. Uh, normally, once again, a big game, two top ten teams going at it. I would probably stay away from it. Um, but there wasn't that many ga good games to pick this week. There was a lot of blowouts, um, or suspected blowouts. That I just, when it's big spreads like that, I don't like to mess around with them. Um, it's just too hard to tell. Even if they win by thirty and not forty, you know, you get the. So. Um, Stanford at Oregon. Oregon's getting seven at home. Stanford played really, really well against Notre Dame. I shouldn't say played really well. They did not play well and still managed to have a good game against Notre Dame. So, but Oregon has just been running over people. Uh, I watched a little bit of them uh, at Arizona State last week. Um, and Arizona State hung with them for a half, much like Tennessee did the week before, and then Oregon just destroyed them in the second half. So I, it's it's tough. I want you know it's a seven point spread, which is pretty big. Um, but the way Oregon's been playing, it's hard to argue with it. But I am going to take Stanford in the upset. Um, I think Andrew Luck uh, can do some things and hopefully uh, keep it close at least if they don't pull out the win, which it's very tough to win to win in Oregon. Um, but I like Stanford to pull the upset in that one. Uh, next up, Miami at Clemson. Uh, Miami getting three points. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the home dog on this one and go with Clemson. Uh, both teams have, you know, looked good and looked bad. Um, but, you know, a home dog is, especially a close game, you know, three point spread, a home dog uh, in, in conference in the ACC. We'll see what happens, but I like Clemson to pull that one out. Um, next up, we got FSU, Florida State at Virginia. Uh, Florida State getting seven on the road. Virginia, lot their one loss is to USC, who you know is a decent team, um, but Florida State's just been killing people. Uh, so I'm going to take Florida State uh, minus the seven in that one. And last in the college game, we got Notre Dame at Boston College. Uh, Notre Dame minus two and a half. Um, Boston College looked terrible last week. Uh, Notre Dame lost to Stanford, um, but and the, Notre Dame lost a close one to Michigan State, and you know lost to Stanford. But BC didn't show me anything. I was stupid enough to try and pick them uh, last week. So maybe in response to that, I'm gonna pick against them and take Notre Dame getting the two and a half on the road. Um, Moving on to the NFL, and I have to do this kind of quick because we're running out of time. Uh, first up, we got Baltimore at Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh getting one and a half. Baltimore's defense is just crazy, and you know Pittsburgh playing without Ben Roethlisberger. A lot of people said they'd be lucky if they got out of it two and two. Well, they're three and zero so far, but somebody's got to get them. So I'm gonna go with Baltimore in that one. Uh, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Cincinnati getting three points in that one. Um, they looked good last week. Uh, they covered for me, so I'm going to pick them again. I'm going to ride the horse and pick Cincinnati, Cincinnati to cover the three points at Cleveland. Uh, San Francisco at Atlanta. Atlanta getting seven at home. Uh, San Fran killed me last week. Uh, so I'm not, even though that's my team, I'm not going to pick them this week. I like Atlanta. The only trouble they may have there is a letdown after the big game against New Orleans, which they pulled out miraculously. Um, they may have a little emotional letdown, but I like them to cover the seven at home. And last but not least, New England at Miami. Uh, virtually a pick 'em, but uh, the line was minus one at the time I looked at it, so we'll go with that. Um, I really wanted to pick Miami in this one, but I just uh, can't do it. I'm gonna go with New England. I can't. Uh, I hate. I hate Tom Brady, but I can't pick against him in this one. Uh, so I'm going to get pick New England, getting the one point on the road. And those are my picks for this week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this one went a little longer. And like I said, hopefully you guys are enjoying the sports shorts. And keep on watching. Thanks for watching, guys.